The Jack Benny Program. L-S-M-F-T. 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 Right you are. Yes, sir. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. And lucky strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. That says it. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen present at the auctions know just who buys what tobacco. They can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy the finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. So for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. American. Broadcasting for our liberated prisoners of war stationed at Santa Barbara, the Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. gentlemen, tonight, since we're playing to these distinguished members of our armed forces, I have planned to present to you a colonel. A colonel, eh? But I'm going to go farther than that. Here's the whole Cobb Jack Benny. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Doc... Uh... Hmm, what an introduction that was. Whole car. <laughs> well, Jack, I thought it was funny. Oh, you did, huh? <laughs> well, let me tell you something, brother. One more introduction like that, and you'll be the first liberated announcer in radio. <laughs> Whole car. Well, I'm sorry, Jack. I didn't mean to be a smart aleck. It's just that these boys have been away so long, they'd give anything to hear a good joke. You know, Don, now that you mention it, I think you're right. You know, only last night I saw one of these uh, boys here take, uh, take his girl to a lonely spot in the park, sit her down on a bench, put his arm around her, and just beg her to tell him a joke. <laughs> oh, you're absolutely right. Anyway, fellas, I started to say it's really nice being up here in Santa Barbara. Ah, uh, it certainly is, Jack, especially with the ocean being so close. If you ask me, Don, the ocean is too close. What do you mean? Somebody around here is bottling it and selling it for beer. <laughs> You know, just, just because it has a little foam on it isn't fooling anybody. <laughs> Believe me. Well, for heaven's sake, Jack, bottling the ocean and selling it for beer, you're exaggerating. Exaggerating? Don, today is the first time I ever drank a bottle of beer with an undertow. <laughs> Almost pulled my tongue down my throat. <laughs> Jack, you must be talking about that beer they have up here. It's only 3.2. Well, somebody ought to give it 77 more points and get it out of here. <laughs> Jack. Hiya, fellas. Well, well, Mary, isn't it great to be... Say, say, Mary. Mary, come here. What is it, Jack? Your lipstick is smeared. What? Your lipstick is smeared. Well, what are you whispering about? I didn't want these boys to know it. Who do you think did it? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, Mary, wait a minute. You, you mean you kissed all these fellows here? I had to. I ran out of jokes. <laughs> well, Mary, this is, this is one time I don't blame you. They're a nice bunch of guys. I think so. In fact, I'm going out with one of them tonight. He's taking me to the Flamingo Room. Oh! The Flamingo Room, huh? Yeah, that's basic training set to music. <laughs> Say, that place sounds kind of rough. Rough? Last night, while a couple was jitterbugging, I heard the girl say, Hey, Sam, let's make the next dance a waltz. You're kicking the gold out of my teeth. Well, Mary, if that's the case, I don't think... Hi, you fellas. Up to now, you've had nothing but corn, but now Harris is here and a star is born. <laughs> Yeah, 
how do you like that? A star is born. If you want to know the truth, fellas, a stork laid an egg with a soft shell, and they called it Harris. <laughs> Phil, Phil, what's that hanging off your chin? Seaweed. I just had a bottle of beer. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. They get it right from the ocean. Oh, so that's it. What? Well, I bought a bottle of beer, pulled off the cap, and a mermaid popped out and kissed me. <laughs> Phil, are you kidding? A mermaid is half girl and half fish. That's all right. I haven't got a date with her till Friday. <laughs> Well, ask her if she's got a fish. I mean, a friend for me. Huh? Now, Phil, how okay, about... Hey, Jack, speaking of fish, how about that fin you owe me? What? <laughs> you know, the five clams we bet on the sixth game of the World Series. Oh, yes, yes. Here you are, Don. Thanks. But by all rights, Don, Detroit should have won that particular game. What do you mean, Jackson? Well, when York hit that single over second base, Greenberg could easily have made it from third to home. Hmm. Fine time to stop and light a lucky strike. <laughs> My goodness. But Jack, with 40,000 people standing up and yelling LSMFT, what else could he do? Well, he didn't have to offer one to the umpire. <laughs> it was a natural reaction. The umpire yelled strike, and Greenberg thought he meant lucky. I don't care if he wanted a smoke, he should have stayed on third base. <laughs> anyway, the next time that I... Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I'm Sergeant Ryan, the editor of our local paper. Uh-huh. You know, a lot of the boys here saw you overseas, and I'd like to get a story about your last trip. Oh, you mean the one I made this past summer through Germany? Yes. Well, well. Sit down, Sergeant. You better lay down, brother. This is going to be a long one. <laughs> Quiet, soft shell. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> well, Sergeant Ryan? Jack, let me tell him. Oh, Mary. Let me... Well, the night Jack left, he picked me up about 8.30 p.m. at my hotel in New York. We were crossing the 59th Street Bridge on the way to LaGuardia Field. Gosh, Mary, just think. Here I am in the United States, and in a few hours I'll be in Europe. Isn't flying wonderful? Yeah. Gee, I wish I was going with you. I do, too. Rochester, drive a little faster. I don't want to miss the plane. Yes, sir. By the way, Rochester, where did you pack my violin? I put it in that suitcase with the tag on it. Tag? What tag? The one that says, in case of emergency, throw this first. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, well, look, Rochester, while I'm gone, I want you to do the washing, polish the furniture, wax the floor, scrub the kitchen, defrost the icebox, water the garden, and mow the lawn. Uh -huh. And I want you to do those things every week. No loafing like when I was away last year. I found out what happened. And, oh, yeah, don't forget to feed the parrot. That stool pigeon? <laughs> Rochester, I didn't buy that parrot to keep an eye on you. Then why were your letters addressed to him? <laughs> That's none of your business. I should have got suspicious when he, when he answered one of them and he asked me how to spell lazy. <laughs> Well, if you thought the parrot was smart enough to write me a letter, why didn't you take the pen away from him? I did, but he went on taking a leave and got another one. <laughs> Never mind that, Rochester. Hurry to the airport. Say, Jack. Yes? Doesn't it make you nervous thinking about flying all the way across the Atlantic Ocean? Nah, it's nothing. It doesn't bother me at all. Move over here closer to me, Mary. But, gee, it looks like you'd be a little scared at such a long flight. It's nothing, really. I, I never even think about it. Come on, I want to put my arm around. Move over here. I can't. Your life raft is in the way. <laughs> oh, that. Uh, here, I'll move it. There. Anyway, how can you put your arm around me while you're wearing that May West? It's not inflated yet. <laughs> now, come here. There, that's better. You gonna miss me, Mary? Uh-huh. You gonna write to me? Uh-huh. You're not going out? You're not going out with any other fella until I come back? No. Good. Now, will you stop pulling my hair? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's all right, Jack. And when you come back, I'll get the whole gang together and we'll give a big party for you. Say, that'll be swell. A party. 
Hey, just a minute. That reminds me of something. Oh, Rochester. Yes, yeah, boss. While I'm away this time, I don't want you throwing any parties in my house. But, boss. No buts about it. I found out about the party you gave last time I was gone that lasted until 8 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. Tell me more. I'd like to live that one over. <laughs> Disgraceful. What in the world could cause a party to last until 8 o'clock in the morning? Geniality of companionship, army of thought, and plenty of ice. <laughs> That's what I thought. Rochester, here's the airport. Turn in here and stop. Yes, sir. Come on, Mary. It's almost plane time. You bring my stuff, Rochester. Constellation leaving on runway 3 for Casablanca, Tripoli, and Cairo. Gee, look at all the planes. Skymaster leaving on runway six for Rome, Naples, and Vienna. Gee, isn't it exciting? Yeah. Pogo stick leaving on runway five for Anaheim, Azusa. <laughs> Gosh, I wonder... Hey, Jackson. Oh, hello, Bill. I came down to see you all. Gee, that's swell. Flight 60 now loading at gate two for Paris. Munich and Berlin. All aboard, please. That's me, Mary. That's my plane. Here, give me a big kiss. All right. Now, now, Phil, let's just shake hands. Huh? <laughs> I get so. All aboard. Rochester, don't forget all the things I told you. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, boys. Goodbye, Jack. Happy landing. So long, Jackson. Well, it won't be long now. Can you see him, Miss Livingston? No, he's in that crowd of people right by the door of the plane. There, now I can see him. He must be a little nervous. Why? The hostess is carrying him up the steps. <laughs> <laughs> now he's inside the plane. I can't see him anymore. I see him. Where? See those two men sitting by that first window? Uh-huh. Which one is Mr. Benny? The green one. <laughs> Yes. Oh, they're getting ready to take off. Goodbye, Jack. Goodbye. Well, there we go. go. And that, Sergeant Ryan, was the last time we saw Jack until he came back. That's very interesting. Now, Mr. Benny, could you tell me a little bit more about the type of shows you did over there in Germany? Uh, yes, Sergeant. I had a great gang with me. Ingrid Bergman, Larry Adler, Martha Tilton, and our accompanist, David Lee Winter. Now, as I was the master of ceremonies... <laughs> So first I walked out on the stage and knocked him over with a couple of fast jokes. And then I said, hey, fellas, I bring you the world's greatest harmonica player, Larry Adler. (laughs) Gee, I can still hear that applause. Then Larry would step out in the middle of the stage and play the number they all asked for. Begin the begin. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm so fortunate having you as my husband, and we're both so happy. Come, my dear, let's settle over here. Charles, what are you staring at? That picture. That picture on the wall. Ingrid, why did you turn it around? No, 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 you're mistaken. I did not turn the picture around. Then why has Whistler's mother got the rocking chair on her head? <laughs> why? Perhaps she's rearranging the room. Ingrid, I don't know what to do with you. Today you turned the picture. Yesterday you lost the brooch. You cannot be trusted with jewelry. No, but Charles... Give me that emerald ring you are wearing. No. Come, take it off your finger. No, 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 Charles, not the emerald ring. It was the first gift you ever gave me back in those happy, carefree days in Naples. Uh... No, anything but the emerald ring. It holds so many tender memories for me. Memories of days gone by when, when you love me as I still love you. Uh. Well, what, well, what did you say, darling? Uh. Charles, you, you must stop drinking that three two beer. <laughs> Do not change the subject. Thinking that. Think! Why did you turn the picture? Oh, Charles, Charles, believe me, I did not turn the picture. Someone else must have done it. Aha, uh -huh, so now you are accusing the maid. Picking on a poor defenseless girl who was rejected by the desert battalion. <laughs> I shall call her in and ask. No, no, no. Please don't embarrass me in front of the servants. Don't call Marie. She's doing the washing. Let her finish. <laughs> The neighbors are waiting for it. <laughs> Let them wait. I will ring for her. Marie, come in here. Rent our wife. Rent our wife. I'll say, God. Every week she cannot finish that song. Hmm. Here you are. Here I am, sir. Marie. Did you touch that picture on the wall? Oh, no, sir. I never touched anything in here. There you are, Ingrid. You have been lying oh, to me. Oh, but Enough. You may go, Marie. Okay, Chucky, thanks. I got a date with Harry. You mean Harry? No, Harry, he has a hole in his head. <laughs> that hole in his head. <laughs> well, I got to go on and go at you. That's my life. Good night, Limber <laughs> Good night, cutie. Cutie? Cutie? How can you talk to her like that? I force myself. <laughs> See? Oh, my darling, what has happened to our love? When I married you and you brought me to this house, you promised to put me on a pedestal. I did put you on a pedestal. Yes, but when I finished painting the ceiling, you pulled it out from under me! <laughs> 
nagging, nagging, always nagging. Ingrid, I do not know what to do with you. I am going now. Goodbye. No, please don't go. Don't go. Every night he goes out at the same time. What are these mysterious twists? Soon the lights will go low and with it my spirits will sink. Oh, perhaps chance is right. Maybe I am losing my mind. <laughs> <coughs> For this they gave me the Academy Award. <laughs> If I told you I'm anybody else but Charles, I'd be nuts. But you're not Charles. No, I'm not Charles. I'm a detective, and I've come to help you. Oh, then you must be Joseph Cotton. Cotton? For you, baby, I'd be nylon. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, what's your trouble, Iggy? Strange things happen. <laughs> a brooch disappears, and the lights look bright and dim. Pictures turn themselves on the wall. And I do things without knowing it. I see things that aren't there. What shall I do? What shall I do? Have you tried black coffee and tomato juice? <laughs> oh, you don't understand. I'm in great danger. My husband is acting peculiar. He's always muttering strange things. Strange things, huh? What does he keep saying? Greenberg's on third base. <laughs> How do you like that? Look. The lights are getting brighter again. That means my husband is coming back. Quick, he, he, he's in the closet. Okay, but hurry now. Hide in the closet. I'll hick him there, but that's... <laughs> but that's hurry and get rid of him, huh? Hurry, Ingrid. It's stuffy in here. Well, Ingrid, I am back again. Any more pictures turn around, Kido? Charles, don't say things like that. You frighten me. Oh, where are you going? I am going to hang my hat in the closet. No, 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 Charles. Please, not there. Out of my way. I am going to hang my hat in the closet. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, <laughs> Ingrid, perhaps you are not to blame for the things you do. You do not know what you are doing. You are losing your mind. You need a rest. I must send you away. All right, Charlie, up with your hand. Wait a minute. Who are you? I'm Cotton. Cotton. And that's what I like about the South. <laughs> well, poop that bail out of you. No, you don't. You've been trying to make your wife believe she was insane so you could get her out of the house and look for those hidden jewels. No, so, that was it. Yes, honey, he was trying to drive you crazy, and I'm going to tie him to this chair and go for the police. Let me alone. Let me alone still. No, you don't. Oh, still. There. He can't bother you now, Ingrid. He's tied to the chair. Now, you guard him until I get back. Hmm. There you are, Charles. Tied to a chair like a criminal that was. For years you have tormented me, embarrassed me, degraded my life, ruined my health, tried to drive me mad, didn't you, Charles? Didn't you? Why don't you answer me? Because I'm tied up. I can't turn the page. <laughs> Ingrid, Ingrid, please, you can free me. You can cut these cords. Pick up that knife. There is no knife here. Certainly there is a knife there. See, you've got it in your hand. Charles, are you suggesting that this is a knife that I hold in my hand? Have you gone mad, my husband? Oh, oh is it I who am mad? Oh, yes, of course, this is a knife. Ingrid. Oh, I'll not hurt you. No, I just torment you. <laughs> just torment you. Like you tormented me. <laughs> So heartless, so cruel, so round, so firm, so fully. Oh, wow. I do not know what I'm saying. You're right, Charles. I'm mad, mad, mad. But, Ingrid, my darling, we can forget the past. We can be happy if you will only remember one thing. What is your chance? You must remember this. A gift is still a gift. A fire is still a fire. Ingrid, what is that? Oh, just a little something left over from Casablanca. <laughs> oh. 
Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Listen to what Mr. Charles Jackson Gunter, independent tobacco buyer of Madison, North Carolina, said. The reason I smoke Lucky's is because of that good, sweet tobacco I've seen them buy at the auction. Good, sweet, ripe tobacco such as Lucky Strike buys tastes better and smokes milder. I've been smoking Lucky for 25 years. Quote, good, sweet, ripe tobacco such as Lucky Strike buys tastes better and smokes milder. Unquote. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's program are Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Coldsboro, North Carolina. And Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. Russell Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike. L.S.M.F.T. 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 Make no mistake, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Thanks very, very much, fellas. I also want to thank Larry and Ingrid for being with us. You were a grand audience. Thanks very, very much. This is the National Broadcasting Company.